So Spider-Man 2 delivered an incredible experience. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and I just really love the journey that they took us on with all the different characters and the story arcs and seeing Venom um, and just how they did it and the different world building stuff. It was really exciting. But the thing that I've been thinking about ever since I finished the game is what's going to happen next, that this game set up so many interesting um, angles that they can take Spider-Man 3 to. And so I really want to break it down with you guys and give you some of my predictions for how insane Spider-Man 3 is going to be and looking at some of the stuff they teased in this game and how I think it's going to play out in the next one. So that being said, buckle up and let's get our prediction hats on and see what maybe possibly Spider-Man 3 is going to look like. So let's dive right into it. So first off, I got to talk about my boy, Cletus Cassidy. Now, I don't know what Insomniac was thinking, but they took such a major character and put him in a side mission where Carnage shows up in this game. Obviously not in his full form, but it's very much teased that he is going to be showing up. Now, it's possible that this could be some DLC where they kind of tease uh, Carnage and Cletus, and he's kind of like this cult leader, um, and he actually more will become the character that we know him as now that he has the symbiote he's stolen it from Oscorp that you think that he will um, now kind of be after um, using it for himself and it is possible that they could throw this into some DLC for the future and you could have a carnage uh, DLC which I think would be absolutely incredible and crazy but I think for a character that big that you probably are gonna save him for spider-man 3 I could be wrong it could be DLC but I imagine that they're going to save him for the third game. And what I imagine is he's going to kind of take on that ultimate form where this guy is kind of crazy. He's kind of like a cult leader. And I almost imagine that he's going to kind of be more like the ultimate Spider-Man carnage where he's going to just be fused to the symbiote. He's going to become an absolute madman. He's going to be running around New York, um, essentially sucking the life out of people and draining them for his use. And he's going to go full crazy and I couldn't be more excited to see what they're going to do with this character. I was worried at the end and I still have questions like so at the end of the game when they get rid of all the symbiotes and kind of how Venom took over the city part of me wonders like does that mean that the carnage symbiote is dead but it must not mean I'm just that part has me with question marks as to like how would that not have killed Carnage? Like, I'm sure they have some kind of reasonable explanation. Um, but I imagine that in the next game, we're going to see Carnage and we're going to see him in his full glory. And maybe he will be the catalyst that kind of drives the first game. And maybe Miles feels like he can't fight Carnage on his own and he needs Peter to come back into the game. It'll be interesting to see. Um, it's also possible it could be DLC, but I really think they're going to save a character this big for the game, the main game, and I could not be more excited that we are actually most definitely getting Carnage at some point. And then the second thing that we're probably going to see in either a Miles Morales 2 or in the next game is Silk. Um, now, I imagine that they're going to do Silk a bit differently than she was done in the comic book that I imagine they're not going to do like the whole relationship thing that her and Peter had where they kind of have this uncontrollable drive to be with one another because they're bitten by the same spider. Um, instead, I imagine that they might actually put that on Miles and her, that that would actually be more of an interesting point because I think it would be weird to have Peter running around cheating on MJ with Silk, especially because she, she seems like she would be way younger than Peter. So I imagine Miles and her might have a relationship and you'll probably see her show up in the game. Um, I imagine if it if she shows up in a second Miles Morales game, that she will be a playable spider woman, that you'll be able to kind of switch back and forth between her and Miles, or at least go on an adventure with her like you did um, with Miles and Peter in this game. Uh, it's possible too, because I mean, for Spider-Man 2, they had three playable Spider-Men. It's possible that in Spider-Man 3, they have three playable Spider-Men that you could play as Miles, Silk, and Peter. Um, it would be really interesting to see that and to see that kind of dynamic. The only thing that makes me like, like if I got to be honest, when she showed up, part of me was like, oh, that's so interesting and so cool. They're going to bring this character. It makes sense because Sony is going to be making a TV show with Amazon for her. So they probably want to push her in other media so that people are aware of the character so that they watch the property when it comes out on Amazon. But it also makes me nervous because um, like it's one thing to have Miles Morales show up. Having Silk show up, it just feels like it almost 
downgrades the specialness of Spider-Man, if that makes sense. That not only do we have Spider-Man and now a second Spider-Man running around, but we're actually going to have a third Spider-Man running around in this universe. I know that works in the comics and you kind of don't really think about it and maybe I'm overthinking it, but it does kind of start to make Spider-Man in this universe feel less special it'd be like in the wolverine game if there were three more wolverines running around who had identical powers for the most part that that would start to feel like the main wolverine is less special than he was and so i wonder how they're going to handle that i wonder if we'll even feel that i just know that with her showing up that was my hesitancy is like i just hope that this doesn't make like i don't know like it just feels like how many more spider people could there be am i right um and so i just hope that it doesn't make it feel like peter and miles are i don't know like not special anymore because now there's three of them it seems like every game we get a new spider person showing up and so i hope they do it well i hope they do her character justice it'll be really unique to see what they do um for a take on her but i essentially can't wait to see her i imagine that she'll have some form of relationship with miles and they will use her as a playable character i imagine in either a second version of his game or possibly in spider-man Three. And then kind of the last thing and major prediction that I have is essentially that the Goblin is going to show up. That They've been kind of teasing that the Goblin was going to be a thing for a while now. And I really think that come this third game, the Green Goblin will appear. I imagine that Norman is going to be making a cure to try to save Harry from his coma. And what he will do is he's not going to want to test it on Harry. I imagine there will be some kind of thing where the genetic code needs to be in line with Harry's in order for it to work. If whoever they do the test subject as, and I imagine that Norman will volunteer because he cares about his son. And I imagine that he will actually take the serum into himself. And I also imagine that he's going to give it to Harry. And what I think they're going to do is that they're going to pull a spectacular Spider-Man where throughout the game, Harry's going to come back and he's going to be normal and you're going to think that Harry has become the villain once again that they're gonna make Peter they're gonna make Miles think like oh no like Harry has turned rogue again he must be the Green Goblin and it's gonna be like in Spectacular Spider-Man where for a long time Peter thought that Harry was Green Goblin the twist will be is that Peter finds out that it's actually Norman and that maybe Harry's addicted to the serum because the Goblin serum is often addictive but he's not necessarily becoming the goblin he's just more of an addict um, to the serum itself and that it actually will be revealed that Norman is actually uh, the Green Goblin and on top of that I think that we're actually gonna see the Green Goblin revenge plot where I think the goblin serum is going to drive Norman mad it's gonna make a manic um, that at the end of the game they set up him having tension between spider-man and feeling like spider-man is the reason Harry is in a coma and almost died and like that he hates him and that he doesn't trust him goblin serum when he takes it is gonna turn that side of Norman even darker and he's gonna become vengeful and he's actually going to to seek out revenge on Spider-Man. And I think that we're actually gonna see the death of Mary Jane, that I actually think that now that their relationship is kind of restored and in a really healthy space, that what usually happens with Spider-Man when things are going too well is things go horribly wrong. And I could totally see them doing the bridge scene, um, but instead of it being Gwen Stacy, that they do uh, they do it with Mary Jane instead and that Norman finds out that Peter is Spider-Man and he kind of loses it and he plays into hiring Peter and befriending Peter and walking alongside Peter more as an even more of a mentor role. Um, and that he starts to bring together the Sinister Six and bring in all these villains who hate Peter and hate spider-man and want revenge and he orchestrates this plan essentially to destroy peter's life and the climactic version of what that's going to look like is that eventually norman is going to reveal like hey i'm the green goblin and he's going to go around and he's going to steal mary jane and he's going to throw off the bridge and she's going to die and you're going to see peter have this wrestle and i think that norman is going to be the catalyst that will most likely pull spider-man back into the game that it is possible that maybe they do carnage and miles is like hey i can't handle carnage on my own i need you to come back me and silk can't do this um but i imagine it's going to be goblin actually showing up that goblin is actually going to start ruining peter's life 
and getting involved in it and that is going to make peter show up as spider-man and be like dang i've been sleeping on like the responsibility piece of what i promised to uncle ben and because of that all these horrible things are happening and i've let norman be able to take over and do all these horrible things in my life and i need to get back in the game and you'll kind of see this climactic coming together of all the villains where Norman is leading them, but ultimately Green Goblin is the bad guy behind it all and that he is going to kill Mary Jane. And so those are my predictions for Spider-Man 3. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for it? Do you think they're going to save Carnage for the main game? Do you think he's going to be DLC? Do you think Silk is going to show up in a Miles Morales solo game? Or do you think they're going to save her for Spider-Man 3? And what about Norman? Do you think they're going to go full crazy Ultimate Goblin Norman where he's a big giant monster? Do you think they're going to go classic Green Goblin where he's wearing the suit flying around on the glider? Do you think they're going to do that kind of spectacular Spider-Man Harry thing where Harry will come back and Peter will be suspicious of Harry, but it actually turns out it's Norman and that Norman's going to betray Peter? Do you think they're going to kill Mary Jane? Because I definitely do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that chunk, and I will see you guys in the next one.